Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the CPA podcast, a place where we chat about our own recent achievements in the area of electronics, software, and mechanical engineering, and more likely than not, give excuses for not having done anything at all. Hello and welcome back to another episode. I know it's been a long while since the last episode aired and uh, the reason of that is basically that I've been busy with actual work and other stuff but um, and also I didn't have that much, uh, I didn't do that much so could have made a boring episode about stuff that I didn't do but uh, instead I'm gonna make a short episode now about the stuff that I did do. This is the first episode of this year, and like many people, I'm sure, I made some New Year's resolutions, many of which have nothing to do with engineering whatsoever. So uh, I only read the news once a day in the morning, and that's it. I don't read news during the day, which I used to do. I do more sport. I uh, started that halfway last year already. It's very, uh, it's very nice. I don't watch random YouTube videos anymore, just a few channels I'm subs- subscribed to. Sorry. Uh, I don't open Twitter all the time, so... Uh, I only check it a few times a day. Same for chatting. I don't chat using the PC uh, all the time. I don't have an open all the time. Just a few times a day when I want to read or type something. I don't have email open all the time. Just when I want to read mail instead of mail having interrupt me. So uh, I like to mask all the real life interrupts. Same with the phone. I put the phone on vibrate now all the time. And when I don't want to be disturbed, I put the phone physically in another room. So people can still call me. The chance I won't hear them will be big so i'll check my phone later and call him back seems to work also before going to sleep i try reading a book instead of watching youtube videos because uh, uh, you can feel yourself getting drowsy and uh, falling asleep instead of videos keeping you awake i uh, guess that's pretty much elementary but uh, seems to work very well so we'll see how uh, how this works in the long term So, getting a bit more into techy stuff, Um, I talked about VGA generator boards last time, and I assembled two, no, ten more boards, a few for various people, I sold two, I gave two away, I'll give another one away, I'll give another one away, so I'll put these in uh, hacker spaces to to connect four monitors to show a nice light effect, and uh, to, uh, to make a dark spot more bright, so to say. There was uh, another failure on the board, I didn't really ignore it, there was an SD card uh, socket with a hinge, so a lid that could flip up and down to secure the SD card instead of the push-push mechanism that you see in phones and so on. And uh, of course you have to take care that when you flip the lid up, it doesn't short resistors and stuff sitting on the PCB where the lid lands, so that was the case on my uh, my PCB, I should have Put a big plastic component there to stop the lid, but whatever. I put an enclosure onto the PCBs to uh, onto the PCB to stop the lid, so that uh, that works out nice. I'll include a picture in the show notes because it looks uh, quite pretty. And uh, to call this an enclosure is probably too much praise. It's two small sheets of transparent acrylic sitting on top and below the PCB, and uh, the top one is to well have a few holes for push button and also to stop the SD card hinge from the lid from uh, flipping on top of components and shorting them. And uh, the acrylic sheet on the bottom of the PCB is to prevent the few through hole components, so there are some big connectors on there, from uh, hooking behind your clothes and scratching your hand when you you move the PCB. So the pins stick out, let's say two millimeters, typically two and a half millimeters, something like that, and the acrylic sheet is three millimeter thick. So whenever there's a pin sticking through the PCB, there's a corresponding aperture aperture hole in the acrylic sheet sitting around that pin. So uh, basically, you can move your hand over the bottom part of the of the device, so the PCB with the acrylic sheet below it, and uh, you won't be scratched. So that seems to work quite nice. I'll include a picture of that. So it's a, it's a nice idea, maybe. And making the acrylic sheets like that, uh, cutting them into shape, involved a laser cutter. And once again, I very nice to own a laser cutter, I guess, and to be able to make your own stuff even in the middle of the night when you get a great idea. Uh, well, now I, what I do now is I basically rent time on a laser cutter. So I go somewhere, I use a laser cutter and I pay per hour or something like that. to bring my own material and do my own stuff there. I know the software works, it's not that uh, difficult. But anytime I'm uh, considering buying my own machine, but... Of course, the longer you wait with it, the more ridiculous it becomes, because I should have bought one right at the start, of course. So, uh, 
it's probably uh, it's probably will be the same story in ten years, and I probably st will still be using someone else's machine. So uh, we'll see. Uh, Software-wise, I've been working on an SD card interface for that same VGA generator board, and uh, the challenge, if that's a challenge, was to distinguish different SD cards. There's SD standard capacity, high capacity, extended capacity, and there's some other cards with uh, either a different uh, interface or a different pinout, or they usually don't have a FAT32 file system, but an XFAT file system on there. So I don't want to do that. Eventually, I want to be able to read a FAT32 file system because that's uh, most of the SD cards I use or have, or most of the SD cards I get to see from other people have a FAT32 file system on there. So uh, if you follow a the SD card standard, or at least the simplified standard that I use, and some other documents on the, on the net, you notice that there's, the timing is quite critical. Timing between commands at the end of a command and the preamble of a command, or, or stuff like that. And um, I can imagine that a software project works nice on your own bench with your own cards, and then you use someone else's card, and then suddenly it stops working, because that card is implemented a bit differently. So a friend of mine helped a lot with uh, code, he had some code that worked with his own card for an actual product project that he did. And I read the code and uh, all seems very clear. Then I read the standard, or the simplified standard, implemented all the timeouts, and uh, I think this is pretty solid now. I tried it with every card I could find, and uh, some other guy will give me more cards to test with. So uh, I'm pretty confident this works, so I'm quite happy with that. So the next step will be to implement read-only FAT32 file system. Right now I made a few prototypes, uh, and I, I didn't include the SD card software at all, I just used a, a, a fixed effect, four fixed effects, so you can toggle, uh, you can cycle through them with a push button, and uh, put them at some places and connect the monitors to them, and uh, it looks quite nice. I will not include picture of that, because I don't have pictures of that. Uh, some other semi-social stuff that I did. Yesterday was the HCC Programming Division Meetup. I think they have a meetup every month. The third Saturday of the month, is that right? Yeah. So last time was the, the, the most recent one was Saturday, it's Sunday now. And I went there and did a little talk about my CPU project. So I think there were between 10 and 15 people. I pretty much used the same talk as I did with the HCC Retro Meetup, except there was a little bit more uh, focus on the software part instead of the hardware part, because maybe some of these people are more into software and not very familiar with the hardware or building blocks and so on, so it's hardware stuff is not so interesting. I think uh, every meeting they start with um, free form meetings, so everyone can show everything and talk about their projects and uh, collaborate and, and debug stuff and uh, work on their projects and whatever. And after that, everyone can give a subject that he or she wants to talk about, if he or she has anything to talk about, and then state how much time they need to discuss that, and then do their story afterwards. They collect how much time they need, and then everyone does their story, and then, and then that's it. So I guess that works. I, this is only the first time I heard that, and it takes quite a long time. But the, the advantage is, of course, that everyone gets to know what everyone else is working on. I mean, everyone shuts up, and you have a chance to show your project, and maybe get other people interested, and maybe someone else says, hey, I can help with this project, or we can do something together. I'm not sure how well that works in practice, but uh, maybe maybe that's a nice format. For example, I myself, and I guess other people also have the tendencies to, tendency to, uh, to work on their own project, and not really look up and see what other people are doing. So this is a nice way to work around that, I guess. I'll have to see how well it works. Maybe we can do something like that at the SCC Retro Meetup, or something like a lightning talks, where everyone gets maximum five minutes to tell his or her topic or story or question. So uh, maybe that works. I have no idea. So that uh, meeting was yesterday, and after that I went to the Awesome Space place in Utrecht that was very close by, and uh, the idea was to fix some stuff. I didn't fix anything in retrospect, and uh, what I did instead was put two VGA generator boards on top of uh, cabinets, top of two cabinets, and put four monitors on top of the cabinets to shine down on a long hallway, so that was a nice effect. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going back next week, I think, to put another board there and four more monitors, because, um, because I have a lot of idle monitors standing there, and maybe it's nice to do something with that, instead of just let them collect dust. There was another guy there uh, decorating the place with LEDs, or putting LEDs in existing objects. So he had a birdhouse with LEDs put in, or a small enclosure with a small hole, and then he 
uh, LEDs would shine through the hole and then create three three LEDs would shine through the hole and create three spots on the on the ceiling. It was a quite nice effect. So uh, upcoming stuff there's not too much. I think in March there's also the HCC Retro meetup in Bildhoven in the Netherlands. If you happen to live there, come take a look. It's quite interesting. Also in March there's going to be the next uh, Retro Challenge. I'm still, I'm still waiting for the page to come up to where you can register yourself. And I'm, I'm going to register myself as well as participant with the same project I did or tried to do last time and uh, failed miserably, namely make a small Commodore 64 intro or demo for the Home Computing Museum in Helmond in the Netherlands. So I, I only got about 10% in and then the time was up last time, so I'll simply continue it now. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, to assist in the summarizing of the participants. I liked that last time quite a bit and uh, I'd like to do that this time as well. So I applied for that and uh, hopefully it'll uh, turn out just fine. So that was all for now. For more information, links and previous episodes, visit podcast.cba.si. Stay tuned, thanks for listening and goodbye.